Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Mason African Motives are still working on engineer science and three. So we have got the question which is uh, actually on motion, energy, and power. So still a continuation from uh, the previous classes that we had, uh, but this time focusing on motion, energy, and power. So if you're new, you can uh, consider being part of the family Mason African Motives by subscribing. And also don't forget to share our videos to your friends and colleagues so that they also can have a benefit from this information that you are having. So let's uh, just quickly rush through the question that you are given on motion, energy and power. So the first question is to define the term mass of an object. All right, so we know that uh, the mass is actually the quantity of matter that possesses, uh, that a body possesses, uh, something like that. So that is the mass of an object it is the quantity of matter that a body possesses uh, that is a mass okay so i think this one is direct and straightforward okay then distinguish between displacement and distance okay so the difference is there is actually that the displacement uh, is you're actually referring to a vector quantity and the distance uh, is just a normal scalar quantity all right so that is uh, the difference between the two. The displacement is a vector quantity, while least the distance is a scalar quantity. That is, we just talk about the magnitude of the distance. It's just five meters, no direction to be involved in that matter. All right. On 1.3, we are given that a Toyota Yaris moves from rest and accelerates for, five, for 15 seconds and reaches a velocity of uh, 20 meters per second. It continues with a uniform velocity for 15 seconds and the driver brakes and the car stops after 10 seconds. All right. So we are then given to calculate all these. And, but on 1.4, you are now asked to make a sketch of the velocity temperature for the Toyota during the motion. Guys, uh, actually, when you are answering this question, that sketch is supposed to be the first thing that you have. So whether this question is not asked on the first part, we're supposed to have this sketch because that is the only thing that you can actually help us to uh, answer this question. So I don't know how uh, this question was actually displayed, but we are supposed to have a sketch first before. So we are going to redraw the sketch later on. So for the meantime, let's just have a sketch that can just help us to answer the, the other questions too. Uh, just this one is just for us to answer the questions okay so we're given we know that this is velocity in meters per second this is time in seconds all right so what happened this is our toyota Aries, which started at at rest which means from rest that our velocity is actually zero meters per second and accelerates for 15 seconds which means it's going up that is to accelerate okay until it is as uh, that is for 15 seconds so what was actually the velocity so the velocity that it reaches at that moment was 20 meters per second all right so that was the velocity that was reached which is 20 meters per second it continues with the uniform velocity for 15 seconds so after that it had to continue this so it's going to help us to answer the other questions guys so this one is just a sketch actually uh, not on 1.4 but for us to answer the question okay so if it continues for 15 seconds but we are at 15 so it's going to be 15 plus 15 which is we are now at 30 all right so 15 plus 15 that's 30 then what happens and that is another point now the driver brakes and car stops after 10 seconds so actually when the car stops is now at rest so it's going to be brought down but this is happening in 10 seconds so it's now 30 plus 10 which is now at 40 seconds okay so with this diagram it's now easier for us to answer the first question calculate the acceleration in the first uh, 15 seconds okay so you know that acceleration uh, this is the first 15 seconds here there is an acceleration actually that is occurring okay so you know that that acceleration is uh, the change in velocity okay so this is 1.11 which is the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in what in time all right which actually means we have got v2 minus v1 over over t okay t2 minus t1 which is actually your acceleration okay so we can actually sub that uh, because it started at zero and ended at 20 so this is 
your v2 and this is your v1 okay so your v2 is this velocity of what velocity v2 means velocity so that is velocity at 20 so it's going to be 20 minus v1 it started at 0 over t2 minus t1 that's your t2 and this is your t1 so it's 15 minus 0 so this is going to be 15 minus 0 like this all right so that's what that's what we actually had there so if you are to use your calculator properly here just divide you're going to obtain something like 1 comma 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 so actually an endless decimal which is an acceleration so acceleration will be 1.333 which is in meters per square second so remember acceleration is measured in meters per square second which is can be written like this still it's a representation for still is a representation for meters per square second with this a negative like that okay so that was the acceleration for that part uh, let's see another part that you're given the total distance of the entire motion of the entire motion which is the movement that was taking place what was the total distance okay so you know that this distance is actually equivalent to area so you've got a rectangle a triangle a rectangle and another triangle so that is what you're going to use for the area uh, for the distance which is actually the area of the shapes okay so you're going to just calculate the areas there so that's 1.32 so you're going to have the distance which is equivalent to the area so you've got the area of a triangle area of a rectangle you know that area of a triangle is half is times perpendicular height and we've got length times width plus another half base times perpendicular height again okay so the first triangle this is going to be your base here which is 15 and the height which is 20 so it's half of 15 times 20 all right so it's half multiply by 15 multiply by 20 that's your first area which is the first distance covered a rectangle that's length times width so in between here 15 and 30, 30 minus 15 it's 15 and here we have got 20 so it's 20 times 15 or 15 times 20 20 times 15 like this plus we move on to the last one we also have the same thing that's the rep, the triangle here so we've got half base times height which is between 30 and 50 there is a 10 so it's half of uh, you subtract here 40 minus 30 which is what we 40 minus 30 which is actually a 10 so there's 10 meters so there's 10 units and here is the same as 20 the same height of 20 is the same height that you have here so it's half of 10 times 20 so take note here you subtract between the two okay so it's half of 10 times 20 so now you can actually combine this uh, so depends with the way that you are working with this uh, but if you are to work this stage by stage this is going to give you 150 plus you simplify this which is going to give you 300 if you multiply properly plus you multiply this which is going to give you a 100 all right so you add everything 150 plus 300 plus 100 which is going to give you 550 so this is going to be 550 meters so this is actually the total distance uh, which was taken or which was uh, traveled by the uh, object that you are given which is the toyota yaris that we had all right so it traveled for 550 meters something like that which is the in 40 seconds all right so sorry sorry for that i think the other part is clear which is uh, on the average velocity in 40 seconds so if you're given the average velocity velocity we know that is distance over time so this one is actually direct guys 1.33 so we actually know that velocity is distance over time that's distance over time taken so this is the time taken the distance traveled over the time taken okay so we already calculated uh, the distance that was traveled in 40 seconds was this is for 40 seconds which is 550 so we've got 550 which is measured in meters over the time taken the time taken for the entire journey which is 40 seconds remember 40 seconds is the time for the entire journey here your entire journey here was taken in 40 seconds so you're going to divide by 40 okay so this is going to be divided by 40 like this all right so if you divide these two you are going to obtain uh 13 18.75 
okay so this is distance which is in meters time in seconds so it's going to be meters per second so velocity actually it's in meters per second so if you forget this guys know that velocity is in meters per second okay then uh back now to the 1.4 which is now asking us to draw to make a sketch of the velocity time graph or the velocity time graph okay so what you're going to do guys is to just redraw this velocity time graph as it is okay so you just make a neat sketch but this is what you're supposed to show 0 15 30 40 uh, and this 20 velocity in meters per second time in seconds so that's your sketch so you can actually use this to answer your 1.4 but make sure that it's a neat sketch okay so that's what you're supposed to do there all right so that's your velocity time graph let's see um so that's a 1.4 done then on 1.5 we are given that uh, we have got a flat belt fits around a pulley okay so we've got a flat belt which is fits around a pulley right then what happened which is a diameter of 45 centimeters so there's a diameter of 45 centimeters the belt is a speed of 17,6 meters per second and transmit 9 newton per millimeter belt width all right all right so Guys, I think this information we just have to take it down so that it doesn't confuse someone here. On 1.5, okay, this is what we had. We are given the diameter actually of the belt, which is uh, 45 centimeters. Okay, but we know that these units should be in meters, so you can uh, actually divide by 100, which is 0 0.45 meters. All right, then the belt has a speed so which means this is the belt speed in meters per second so actually it's the velocity that one which is that which is 17,6 meters per second it's a linear velocity that's why i'm writing v meters per second linear then it transmit 9 newton which means uh, actually the force that we are given it's a uh, 9 newton per millimeter belt width okay so the force that we are given is uh, actually 9 newton per millimeter width so we are working with the belt width, take note, all right, but per millimeter. We are given the effective pull in the belt is, that is the effective force here, you know, given the effective force of everything, which is uh, 423. That's 423, 23 newtons, all right. Then the last part is the belt with the belt there, and the belt is a width of 18 centimeters, but remember that we are supposed to use the width here to determine the actual the force that you're going to have at the end because it's nine newton per millimeter and the width of the belt is 18 centimeters but this is per millimeter so we are going to be forced to convert this 18 uh, centimeters back to millimeters so to millimeters we have to multiply by 10 because one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters so we are going to have 180 millimeters so this is the width of the belt in millimeters but we have got how many it's nine millimeter per each millimeter and we've got 180 millimeters so we are going to multiply these two when we want to use this okay so just take note we are going to multiply so let's so the first person calculate the power transmitted by the belt in kilowatts okay so take note the power should be in kilowatts okay so what we have that we have got um this is 1.51 1. all right this is power and we have got effective force so you can actually use the effective force and the velocity power that's effective uh force that we are given the tension uh times the velocity so which is uh, 43 423 times the velocity which is 17,6 all right so if i multiply these two i'm going to obtain something like 7 4 4 uh, 4 again comma 8 and this is power which is measured in watts but take note of from this part we are asked to give this in kilo kilowatts so kilo means you're going to divide by a thousand uh, in order for you to obtain that we we'll just move a comma one two three which is going to be seven comma four 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 eight kilowatts so here there's no need of me rounding off because already 
it's, it's an exact decimal I can round off. Maybe it's something that is not exact. So here I can just leave it like that. Okay, so that is the power actually there in kilowatts. So that's what we had, guys. Okay, so let's see the tight side of the tight side of the force. So that's where now we are going here because we're given that the belt is a speed of and transmit nine newton per millimeter. So you're going to obtain now the tight side, which is the force there. So take note, we said it's nine newton per millimeter. All right, so let's see, this is 1.15, 1.52. So this is gonna be T1 on the tight side. We know that it's T1. So we are given 9 newton per millimeter per which means one so it's like this when it is 9 newton it is equivalent to one millimeter what if we have 180 millimeters what if it's 180 millimeters what are we going to have so actually we are going to multiply so it's going to be 180 uh, 9 times 180 in this case so what are we going to obtain if we multiply 9 times 80 we are going to obtain 1620 newton okay so you will find that uh by multiplying the newton per millimeter or depending with what you're given it can be per centimeter if it was per centimeter you just multiply by 18 but this one was per millimeter that is why we had to convert to millimeters then multiply okay so that is your tight side of the force so that is force, that is why we are focusing with force in newtons. Okay, then the pulley speed in rest per second. Okay, so the pulley speed, we know that that one is equivalent to N. So what can we do actually? We have the velocity, remember, and we know that velocity is equivalent to pi uh, dN. We know that one, one point, so this is actually 1.53. So we know that velocity is equivalent to pi dN. All right. So if I am given in uh, revs per second, I'm just going to use this like that. If I'm given revs per second, I'm going to divide by 60, but this one is in revs per second. Remember, our N guys was already in revs per, per second. Uh, so we, we need it in revs per second, so, so uh, here I'm just going to use like that. Okay, so well, let's substitute here, let's see what we have, the velocity, we have got the velocity which is 17.6 17.6 then is equal to pi times d that is the diameter the this one 0 0.45 okay times n all right so something like that okay so in order for me to find n i'm just going to divide this by this number that is multiplying this part here I'm going to divide the other side. So it's 17,6 over pi times 0 0.45. Okay. So if I do this, if I divide these two, I'm going to find my N there. Okay. Which is something going to be 12, comma, this is what I obtained, guys. 12, comma, 4, 4, uh, 9, 9, 5, 3, 3. Yeah, something like that. So you can actually convert these to three decimal place or three decimal place so this one is going to change to five so it's going to be 12 comma four because this will be one two three so this 10 is going to give it's now a 10 it gives here it's now a five so it will be four five like this so you can write a zero or you can just leave it like that so that's your n which is in rest per second so if the question wanted you to convert to rest per minute that's when you are now multiplying by 60 but uh, just direct like that you are having your n which is in revs per second so that was it guys uh actually working on motion energy and power from uh, past exam papers so as you can see guys there are so many typical questions actually that you can work with and uh you need to actually revise as much questions uh, from past exam papers so that you can actually understand how they ask these questions so that's it, guys from us on african motives working on past exam papers and revision for engineering science n3 till you meet again